Welcome and hello. This is Caffeine Zombies with some bite-sized news. Today is July 19th, 2024. Surprise, surprise, surprise. To those who may not be aware, Donald J. Trump has accepted the nomination of the Republican Party. He indicated that his speech was rewritten for last night, but it was still very much Trump. And it ended with an actually pretty strong message. We will restore the republic and we will usher in the rich and wonderful tomorrows that our people so truly deserve. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, brighter, happier, stronger, freer, greater, and more united than ever before. And quite simply put, we will very quickly make America great again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wisconsin. God bless you. God bless you, Wisconsin. And God bless the United States of America, our great country. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. There were, of course, parts of the speech that were good. His string of positive, strong word choices near the end there, some of the talk about being unified, all good. Even in his way, the ramblings about Hulk Hogan, Dana White, and much of the Wisconsin stuff, all fine and felt very much like a good version of Trump. He's essentially called the current president the worst because, you know, he has a record length of record low unemployment who dramatically lowered the deficit spending compared to Trump. He recovered our nation from the pandemic fallout, who continued and finished multiple complex major product projects that were even started during Trump's time, either as planned or better than expected, and who has done all that while actually getting people medical payment relief, showing our allies that they can depend on us, standing up against dictators, and doing it all while losing fewer armed soldiers than Trump did during his tenure. And then Trump comes out and says, well, Trump's just better. Better than all of that, and certainly better than this president, who's the worst. That's not at all divisive, right? He didn't need to, for instance, exaggerate the inflation effects, but did. He didn't need to put up a chart that was wrong about when and why illegal immigrants were starting to uptick, but did anyhow. He could have just used the actual numbers and when they started. And he definitely didn't need to be wrong about crime. Violent crime continues nationwide to lower since post-pandemic numbers and are at or below Trump era numbers, while property crimes have mixed results. But Trump isn't about being correct. And Dems hate it when Biden gets things wrong as much as they hate it when Trump does. But when Biden gets some things wrong, it usually things like saying he got insulin down to $15 in the debate instead of $35. Yeah, well, he got it down from hundreds and screwed up the number, but he did it. Trump only promised to do things like that. Wisconsin was present. And when Trump said he was trying to buy their vote for $250 million in projects, they should have all asked, like the Foxconn deal? How many times do you need to be conned for hundreds of millions of dollars to choose the other guy? So yeah, the speech had some good moments in it, but was just another example of how people prefer the sizzle over substance of a steak. Some people whose bravery never should have been questioned was back in 1944. An explosion occurred when two ships uh, were loading ammo and that all went boom in the Great Chicago Explosion. 258 sailors faced court-martials and were convicted of disobeying orders, 50 of whom were charged with mutiny because they refused to continue to work loading after 320 people were killed in the explosions. Meanwhile, a whole group of other sailors received a leave during the same time to avoid any risk of continued dangers. The difference? The 258 sailors were black. 
The U.S. Navy announced finally in 2024 those Navy officers as being exonerated of any crime due to the various legal errors and inadequate counsel. They cannot go back in time and remove the dishonorable discharge. They can't wave a magic wand and allow them the opportunity to work jobs they couldn't have because of that dishonorable discharge on their resume. And in fact, after 80 years, all of those sailors were already dead, were unable to have the exoneration while they were alive, so they don't even know. But only two years after the incident, due in part to this incident showing just how segregated the Navy could be, it led directly towards the 1946 Civil Rights Act. And another thing that people don't know a lot about, Jupiter's Great Red Spot has been shrinking. Normally that might be a good thing if, a mole, if it were a mole or something similar, but this is one of the features about Jupiter we use to describe it. The red spot is really a continuous storm and has been around for at least the last 150 years. Scientists think that the two jet streams, the two jet streams that are opposite directions, may have helped keep it alive as long as it has been. And other guesses are perhaps smaller storms feeding into it. And something that's definitely helped is the lack of a surface on Jupiter that prevents a lot of friction. It being made of gas entirely, after all. This is a big, big piece of news and a big spot coming in at about 1.3 times the width of Earth, some 10,159 miles wide today, but was 30,000 miles wide in the late 1800s. Looks like the United States isn't alone in its shrinkflation. At this rate, the great red spot of Jupiter may only last another 20 years, but for now, let's keep hopes alive. If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like or a subscribe to keep bringing me into the YouTube algorithm, or pop in a comment about how much you dislike me. Anything helps. Till next time.